Hi guys, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So this is hopefully a short and fairly simple video. It's a subject I have spoken about a fair amount before, but it is the matter of centre of percussion. Now, we have spoken a lot about centre of percussion and many other people have spent a huge amount of electronic ink on the subject. There are many ways of calculating where the centre of percussion lies or where the region of centre of percussion lies in a sword blade. However, what this is essentially is, is an instructional video for how to work out where the centre of percussion is on your sword and this is my preferred method and it's incredibly simple and you can do it with any sword you can do it anywhere in the world at any time and it doesn't, you can be able bodied or whatever it doesn't matter all you do is you get your sword you get something you don't mind hitting and you hit it okay but the way you hit it um, it's a bit like tuning. Imagine tuning something so you go up and down until you find the sweet spot. Very simply, you get your piece of wood, get an edge or a corner. Now, you'll notice I'm hitting the thing with the tip and I can actually feel the sword bouncing. Okay? If I just let it drop, boing, boing, it bounces off. What you don't want to happen is you don't want your blade to bounce off the thing you're hitting. Okay? The centre of percussion is other, otherwise known as the sweet spot. Is the, for, is the point of the blade which exerts the most force on the target. Okay? And very simply, if you move up or along the edge, you'll notice it's getting more solid now and bouncing less. Oh, and it's getting really solid now. That's really solid there. And as we move away, it's starting to bounce again. Okay? That doesn't feel very forceful at all. And essentially, we get to a spot about... Wow, there's bits of wood flying off in my face now. We get to a spot about there, there we go, and that is pretty much my sweet spot. You can do that with any sword, you don't have to do it with the edge, you can do it with, if you've got a single edge sword, like a sabre or a back sword, you can do it with the back edge as well, because the, the sweet spot or centre of percussion is essentially a region along the length of the lever. Okay? It's not related to the sharpness of the edge or anything like that, it's just that somewhere along, a, whether it's a stick or a sword, or even potentially an axe, although you know where the sweet spot of an axe is, it's the metal bit on the end. Same for a mace, same for a warhammer. With a sword or a stick, it's a little bit more complex than that. And the sweet spot or centre of percussion pretty much usually lies on most swords between two thirds of the way up the blade and three quarters of the way up the blade. And it's very important to mention that dependent on the type of sword, certainly if it's a pointy type of sword, they often hit with very little force um, at the tip, okay? No, that sword is actually bouncing. I'm not pulling it back there. All I'm doing is dropping the blade forward, doing, and it bounces back up. It has a spring, it is a spring, um, spring effect that bounces off the target. And clearly, the tip of this type of sword does not hit with much force, and because of the cross section and the fact that it's pointy and narrow there, it cuts crap at the point, okay? So these pointy types of sword, whether it's the Albion Poitiers or the uh, Mercenary or the Ringek I have, any pointy type of sword, generally speaking, doesn't cut very well at the tip. Okay, so there we go, quick and easy way to find the sweet spot, the centre percussion. And you'll notice it's a, it's a spectrum, it's a scale. So it's not that like it can't cut at one point and it can cut at another point, black and white. It's rather that it's awful at cutting there. It's getting a bit better, a bit better. Mm, not bad. Really, really good. Really, really good there. Quite good there. Worse, 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 worse. Okay? So, you, so you, it's like a sliding scale on here, and the best region is around here. I'll just do it with a, just for illustration purposes, just with a different sword. I'll do it with the, um, with the Viking style sword. This is a completely different blade shape. You'll notice that it's almost parallel edges. It does taper, but only very slightly. And it's got a fat, broad, round tip. This does bounce at the tip, because we still have a central percussion. It still doesn't cut as well at the tip as it would do a bit further down, but it's a lot more solid at the tip, because we've got a lot more mass and width at the tip. Okay? So not only is the blade geometry better for cutting, because it's a flat, flat blade there, it's broader and therefore it has more mass at the tip, so that helps as well. It's more like a falchion or um, a messer. Okay, so um, it hits fairly solid up there. Wow! Okay, really solid about there. Still really solid. 
still really solid, getting less solid. So what we find with this type of sword, in contrast to the pointy type, is it can cut at the tip, not greatly, about an inch or two down from the point, it can cut reasonably well actually, and then it can cut really, really well for a really long portion of blade here. Okay, so generally speaking, broad, these wide type of flat blades, not only because of their blade geometry, although that is part of it, because their blade geometry means that the edge is quite fine, even at the tip, with a pointy sword it's not, it's more like a square section. Um, but because of their broadness and because they have a mass right the way along the, along the blade here and they're not tapered, they have a very long region of central percussion. They have a long or a big sweet spot, okay? And it goes further up the blade. So, despite the fact that these blades are the same length from base to tip, I can actually effectively cut someone from further away with the Viking sword than I can with the pointy sword because this can cut close to the tip, this can't cut really at all close to the tip. Okay, so I have to be closer with the pointy sword. And, um, and not only that, but this sword is more forgiving in the cut because the sweet spot or the central percussion is longer on the broad blade uh, than it is on the, the pointy blade. The pointy blade is less forgiving in that sense. There we go guys, cheers! Click subscribe now and also follow us on Facebook.